All right, it's going to tackle reincarnation, rebirth, or annihilation. Uh, what happens when we die, if there is such a thing? This issue was always talked about among spiritual circles and even religious and metaphysical circles. The belief in uh, post-mortem continuity, basically. If this personality exists beyond the body, even before the body, after the body, and goes into a new body, that would fall in line with the concept of reincarnation. Now, it's, in ancient India, a lot of the, uh, the real esoteric Hindus even, uh, in light of the doctrine of reincarnation, not to say it's literally uh, actual, and real but the concept of reincarnation is looked at as a nightmare um you know to keep coming back here <laughs> would be a nightmare uh, for any, any person who's wise who's really thinking you would never want to come back into the state so a lot of times what they would do with um, the highest aspirations of a yogi would be to um free themselves from these cycles uh, in light of reincarnation. Now when Buddha comes along. Buddha was of course originally a Hindu. Just like Jesus was a uh, Jew. We can see these as narratives. Allegories. Or we can look at them literally. But the point is. This um, this thought process. This is the Buddhic thought. Which comes out of Hinduism. Which is Brahmanism and uh, Jainism. Basically, Buddha comes along and says, well, there's no self. Meaning each individual is not a true self anyway. Which means they can't be reincarnated because there's nothing to be reincarnated. So that was the radical uh, flip which uh, the Buddhic thought took in light of um, old time ancient Hindu doctrine. Meaning there is no reincarnation for individuals because there is no individual soul or spirit inside the body. Because see, our concept when we talk about my soul, my spirit, is based on the body. You can't get around it. A lot of people who get into spirituality, yeah, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. We still say, you know, well, I'm not this body, I'm a spirit. But you're only saying that because there's a body there. If there was no body there, you wouldn't be saying I. Um, because the ego is the body. The body is the ego. The brain, it's all one. It's the ego. And it's um, it asserts itself to be real or a, um intrinsically existing thing onto itself. This is part of the illusion. This is the falsehood of uh, the ego so it's based on the body I mean a lot of people won't admit it so to say you have an individual spirit we're only saying that because we have a we see a body so that's that's dishonest it's it's not um it's not true as it claims itself to be that statement it's not really a true statement so the ultimate question is is there a ghost in the machine or is the machine interpreting the great ghost, we could call it? Is there an individual spirit in each of these individual bodies? Or are these individual bodies just uh, sort of like uh, step-down transformers or uh, interpreters of the great spirit? Or great ghost? Or whatever. Now, in reality, the latter is closer to the truth. We can look at, um, probably be easier to look at something like a, uh, just an army of ants. Just, um, just millions and millions of ants, you know, like in the forest. And we could look at that and say, well, those are individual ants. Or they have individual souls. Like when that one ant dies, gonna be, that one ant will be reincarnated into a new ant out of a new egg. Or we could look at it and just say where there's this ant will that um, is sort of like an ocean and it forms bubbles that uh, blow up and pop in and out of existence and these represent the individual ants now those bubbles are not reborn they pop they they uh, blow up and they pop 
and they go back into the ocean. The ocean is reborn. So th this ant will is what is being rebirthed. So we can look at that in light of the human world. Because it's hard to do since we're a human. We're always absorbed in our minds. And we don't really zoom out enough. Um, we don't have that perspective to see these billions of humans. You know. As just like they always teach you to, to uh, start to realize how insignificant this uh, the body, the ego is, this this um, this not self is is insignificant. And and if you really look at it, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's billions of humans here, um, and we come and go. They come and go, just like the bubbles on the ocean metaphor. So those bubbles are not reincarnated. Um, those bubbles don't have individual souls in them but they are part of the um the great soul that is being reincarnated not the individual so when they teach reincarnation and rebirth people we take these things uh through the ego when we first hear about it but uh when you really get into it at the top when they teach that to people they're really trying to get us to look deeper they're trying to get you to investigate what's really going on with uh, birth and death that's what this is about and it's not really reincarnation here's a quote from uh, Shanti Deva he's a Tibetan monk from the 11th century you know, a couple um, about a thousand years ago he says it is a misconception to think that I shall experience suffering in a future life for it is another who will die and another who will be born. So that's a Tibetan Buddhist um, quote there. He's telling you, see, reincarnation is not really true. It's a misconception how people take it. Like I said, we take everything e through the ego. And this ego is what's telling you you have an individual spirit. And that's part of the, um, they call the two wrong views. Is uh, taking the body, ego as a self. And thinking something inside the body is a self. Those are the two wrong views. And the Diamond Sutra says, If a disciple still clings to the arbitrary illusions of form or phenomena, such as an ego, personality, a self, a separate person, or a universal self existing eternally, then that person is not an authentic disciple. And he's just reiterating the point. Uh, basically, it's part of this uh, esoteric wisdom at the core is like we say this is an illusion so if we can admit you know like even new words you say all is one you know but if you say all is one then beyond the uh body ego it's termination you can't um try to cling to an individual spirit this is part of letting go um of that that's an egoic concept and even when people when they have what they call past life regressions, experiences, or people recall things that happened in the past. And, you know, there's been research done on this, and it's pretty accurate. Um, like I said, this is more like our uh, brains, or whatever you want to call it, interpreting the great ghost and interpreting thoughts. Like they say thoughts float in the air. You know, that's not literal, but that only points to the fact that, um, yeah, there are no individual spirits or minds per se we have a interpreter called the brain that interprets this this great mind we can call it for um just to use that as a reference that's why some people you know you have two people having the same idea at the same time you know they don't literally float in the air it's be, it's just only pointing to the fact that there's just this manifold mind that we're all interpreting with these um bodies these egos these brains so that's what happens when you pick up, um, you know, a, a thought stream or previous um, thoughts, you know, like they call the Akashic Records. But I don't think that means a past life. That's not the same thing. That doesn't confirm reincarnation. That only confirms, like I said, we're interpreting um, memories, thoughts of this great mind, this manifold mind. So this is a couple passages from uh, this is from Schopenhauer, actually, on immortality. There's a dialogue he set up. The guy's asking, what's going to happen to me when I die? I want to hold on. What am I going to be? I want to be me. So the wise man tells him, uh, when you say I, 
I. I want to exist. It is not you alone that says this. Everything says it. Absolutely everything that has the faintest trace of consciousness. It follows then that this desire of yours is just the part of you that is not individual, the part that is common to all things without distinction. So that's key right there. If you really think about it, if you see like a mass crowd of people, everybody says, I, 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 I need this. I'm doing that. I'm going here. I, I, I. But if everybody's saying I, does this I belong to them? That's the first illusion. Once you, if you break this one, a lot, you know, you become a lot smarter about this topic. So he says, there lies the illusion. An illusion, it is true, in which the individual is held fast. But if he reflects, he can break the fetters and set himself free. It is only indirectly, I say, that the individual has the violent craving for existence. It is the will to live, which is the real indirect aspirant. So it's this will. It's not really the individual that's saying these things. Like you said, there are no individuals, ultimately. Once you thoroughly recognize what you are, what your existence really is, namely the universal will to live, the whole question will seem to you childish and most ridiculous. So that's the question of what will I be? I, I, he, I, he settled it right there for those who can understand what that passage is um, saying. So basically, he point, he's pointing again to the fact that, yeah, there's like this, um, you can see it as an ocean help you uh, realize this and there's bubbles that rise or there's waves that rise and fall that wave that rose and fell is not uh, reborn not that wave but waves do come and go and the key thing to remember is the next the new wave is not contingent on the previous wave so there really is no you know one to one where we have to wait for this wave to um, sink back into the ocean in order for the next wave to come um, so yeah, reincarnation, no. <laughs> it that's uh that's false, that's a fabrication. You know, that that's an egoic thought, that's an egoic formation in the um teachings. And this is from uh Jogan Dogen. This is a, a famous Zen teacher, a lot of people who are getting into a lot of the uh Western intellectuals getting into a Buddhic thought. But he says, uh, how could we say that the body is mortal, but the mind is eternal? Because that's what the teachings go uh, in line with the eternal mind. Um, all this mind, ultimately, everything comes from the mind. Uh, Buddha is in the mind. Christ is in the mind, however you want to call it. He says, how could we say that the body is mortal, but the mind is eternal? He's, they're basically saying, well, ultimately, all is one substance because people keep saying well what happens when I die as if the spirit mind is going to leave the body so he says the mind that is conscious of this understanding still appears and disappears momentarily and so it is not eternal at all so the, the questioning mind that um, the monkey mind the chatter that goes on is not the eternal mind anyway so how could it be that while his body this body appears and disappears. The mind independently leaves the body and does not appear or disappear. How could we divide this one reality into body and mind or into life and death and nirvana? So he's speaking real mystically, basically again saying there's no, you don't wait on the body to die. Then this mind leaves from the body and then floats around and then finds another um, womb or a pregnant mother's stomach to jump into. Those are the childish notions, um, but it's not contingent on that. Like I said, it's it has nothing to do with that. That's not what is reborn. That's what he's saying. Um, there's something at the core that experiences this process, but it's not uh, you as you know you, the individual. So Maharishi, who's a famous Indian um, yogi from the 20th century, he spoke on this also. He says, birth and rebirth are mentioned only to make you investigate the question and find out that there are neither births nor rebirths. 
They relate to the body and not to the self. Know the self and be not perturbed by doubts. See, he's saying there are no births or rebirths. And they say that in Zen, too. Um, there's actually nothing born. Now, it sounds nihilistic, but you're talking about something that's always in flux. Like, uh, what would be a good picture to take of you? Would it be the embryo? Would it be the newborn? Would it be the infant? Would it be the child? Would it be the adolescent? Would it be the teenager? The young adult? Uh, the middle-aged adult? The uh, elderly? Uh, I mean, the corpse? <laughs> Like, what would be a picture of you? It's always in flux. So there's there's no point where you can grab yourself and say, well, this is me. You know, it's like trying to hold on to water. So if, if just your lifespan is always in flux, how can there be an eternal you that is uh, reborn, a, a steady you that is reborn? No, that's that's not what's taking place. And that's what they're saying here. Like you said, it's only mentioned to make you investigate the question. And you're going to find out. They are neither burst nor rebirth. So even the materialist um, can be right sometimes. And they're right in that aspect that um, reincarnation is not real and rebirth is not what we think. So again, the persona, the you that you know of right now, this, that's always in flux. Um, you could say it's born and it dies, or you can get real deep and say it never was born and um, never dies, because it never really is. But the whole point is, uh, reincarnation, rebirth, are not literal. And whatever appears to be born will apparently die. Peace.